pilot can fly almost 45 feet. Remember, have fun and fly safe. Pilots and safety experts agree that the most difficult and hazardous segments of a flight are the takeoff and landing. Several factors make each takeoff and landing truly unique, and a common challenge among pilots during these critical phases of flight is maintaining the runway centerline. How concerned is a pilot who lands 5, 10, or even 15 feet from center? What if this same pilot were to park 1, 2, or 3 feet from the center of a parking spot at the local store? Are there consequences? A professional pilot will start to feel a bit of unease the second their airplane begins to stray even a foot from centerline. They'll get a healthy case of the leans, their bodies desperately wanting to be back on the center of the runway. That's a good instinct, and it's the instinct that every pilot should develop as they progress through training. First, all pilots, but especially primary pilots, need to learn how to gather the right information. A pilot needs to focus outside the aircraft 99% of the time during the takeoff and landing phases. This allows any small deviations to be quickly detected and corrected, enhancing not only the safety of flight, but overall smoothness. The striped runway centerline itself will be the primary reference for maintaining directional control during takeoff and landing. The centerline is comprised of bold white stripes typically 120 feet long and spaced by 80-foot intervals. At night, if you're lucky, you can reference runway centerline lighting. If the runway doesn't have centerline lighting, make your initial landing approach reference midway between the runway edge lights, then as your landing light begins to illuminate the runway, confirm your lateral positioning by referencing the illuminated centerline markings. The centerline reference combines with fixed visual cues from the aircraft that help determine proper longitudinal axis alignment. This visual information also allows the pilot to immediately detect lateral drift with respect to the centerline. These cues could be set up by noticing how a rivet line compares to the runway, the alignment of a couple references between the glare shield and cowling, or even a visual check to see that the instrument panel appears perpendicular to the centerline. With visual references established, the pilot then puts this information to use by manipulation of the flight controls. During takeoff or landing, runway alignment issues will be corrected with prompt rudder inputs, while lateral deviations will be corrected with the yoke by deflecting ailerons enough to fly the airplane left and right as needed. The takeoff begins well before the pilot ever feels the plane accelerate down the runway. Preparation and planning are critical before ever advancing to takeoff power. Holding short of the runway, the pilot has a chance to make one final check of the windsock, visualizing proper aileron usage for any crosswind. The aircraft should also be positioned to enable a good scan of final for traffic and without crowding the hold short line. Two five two Grand Forks Charlie three five left clear for takeoff. Once cleared to line up and wait, or for takeoff, a last visual check down final for traffic and completion of the before takeoff checklist ensures everything is ready for departure. Taking the runway, the pilot should position the airplane to use all available runway. Taxi straight out from the center of the taxiway and make a ninety degree turn onto the center line. The airplane could be positioned on the numbers or even the threshold markings. The arcing yellow taxi line should be avoided as it can leave hundreds of feet behind the aircraft when used to taxi into position. Think of this as a line designed for pilots exiting and not necessarily entering the runway. Once aligned on centerline, the pilot is ready for takeoff. With calm winds, little to no aileron input should be necessary. Once cleared, smooth advancement of power introduces turning tendencies pulling the nose to the left. A pilot must anticipate this yaw and simultaneously apply a small amount of right rudder pressure to maintain centerline. The more proactive and accurate a pilot responds to these changes, the less input necessary. Allowing the left turning tendencies to pull the aircraft 5 to 10 feet left of centerline will require much more rudder input to correct the deviation. This makes the takeoff increasingly unstable and can lead to over-controlling and loss of directional control. 
Even on a calm day, both right and left rudder pressures are necessary. During rotation, nose wheel contact is lost and the ability to control yaw transfers entirely to the rudder. Smooth yet continuous control pressure will be necessary to maintain centerline. If for any reason the pilot needs to abort the takeoff, the resulting change in power requires a rudder response to the changes in turning tendencies. Small and smooth corrections prevent aggravating an already challenging situation. Even with a textbook takeoff, centerline control cannot end when the wheels leave the ground. A pilot needs to be vigilant and maintain the centerline throughout the initial climb out. Clearance from obstacles and traffic departing parallel runways depends upon maintaining an accurate extended centerline ground track. Upon returning to the airport in calm conditions, the skills applied to maintain directional control will again come into play. Following the stabilized approach, the pilot smoothly reduces power into the round out and touchdown. With the reduction of power during landing, Left turning tendencies are reduced and the pilot must anticipate this change with rudder. Any misalignment of the longitudinal axis to the runway will cause a deviation. Responsiveness and small corrections help a pilot maintain directional control and alignment. At touchdown, maintain back pressure and prevent the nose wheel from contacting the ground early. At touchdown speed, Weight on the main gear increases stability and assists the pilot in maintaining directional control. Once the elevator can no longer keep the nose wheel off the ground, lower the nose and allow the primary means for directional stability to shift to the nose wheel. If weight transfers to the nose wheel too early, directional control becomes more difficult and can be lost. If the aircraft does stray from centerline after touchdown, the first step must be to stabilize the aircraft on a straight track, followed by paralleling the line before slowly correcting back onto the runway center line. This should be done using rudder pressure and not brake pressure. Over braking after touchdown typically results in a pilot not being able to maintain center line. Light brake pressure should only be used as necessary to slow an aircraft already established on centerline and only once aerodynamics slow the aircraft to a safe speed, usually below 30 knots in the Cessna 172. Once below 15 knots, the pilot should be able to safely turn off the runway at the next available taxiway. On the surface, the concept of maintaining centerline appears simple. Proper control inputs, however, can be confounded by the simple everyday experiences each of us share. For most people, directional control has always been a hands-on activity. Cars, bikes, the shopping cart at the local grocery store all require input from the hands and arms. But for a pilot, and especially new pilots, Steering with one's feet is an entirely new motion that takes practice, patience, and an understanding of both the mechanics of the action and the external and environmental forces constantly acting on the airplane. Strive for perfection and, in so doing, enhance safety and be the example of a professional pilot. Have fun and fly safe.